It's in game time. Oh, yeah. Yes. So uh, you you started with your thoughts on uh, Game of Thrones. I'll start my thoughts with in game. I yes, think please. this is the biggest achievement in cinematic history. That's hyperbole. That's big talk. The reason why is no film has ever had a higher degree of difficulty in terms of storytelling, in terms of keeping under wraps, in terms of everything. Because, spoilers ahead, you had every single character in the Marvel Universe in this movie. And everyone knew, everyone knew they were going to come back. You're showing trailers for Spider-Man 2, like clearly. Black Panther just shattered every single record imaginable and in terms of expectations. You're going to make another Black Panther. You're not going to kill these characters off. It doesn't make sense. So, but the fact that like no pictures are leaking out of every single actor on set, that they're not all getting linked to like their Snapchat locations or something, is mine, is crazy. And then, in terms of storytelling, you have 11 years of films, 22 movies, so many different storylines, so many backstories, so many universes colliding into one story and then having it all end at one spot without being a complete mess. And I have issues with the film. There's some things that we'll get into. But leaving that theater, I felt fulfilled and satisfied. It was exhilarating and I enjoyed it and I thought it was a great story. And the fact they pulled that off, I don't think any film ever has had to do that before. I've heard a lot of comparisons to Return of the King. Nah, that was source material written years and years ago. Like, it was easy. It was all laid out in front of you. Like, this was incredible that they created this with good source material, obviously. But they created it out of thin air. And I I don't know how they did it. I I loved it. Well, this movie existed under enormous pressure. So not only did you have to do fan service, you had to do fan service for generations of fans. You had people that grew up with original Captain America that want their film. You had people that grew up with 90s Captain America. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the Hulk in the movie was 90s Hulk where he becomes smart Hulk. So it's like, you have to pay homage to all of these people while making them all collectively happy. And obviously there's going to be problems and, you know, just thinking about it more, I like the movie more than I did originally, but uh, there's a lot of big problems. And I don't think you're going to see a movie event like this for a very long time. They... I don't know how you could do it. Harry Potter wasn't different, was different because, you know, you had six books and you kind of knew where it was going, but it's like the the genius of Marvel is how they took the TV approach and they just said, all right, we're going to release movies like a season of of television. And, you know, you have all these different episodes coming off, kind of like Lost, where it's like, this is Kate's story. This is uh, whatever story. And then they kind of culminate in this big finale. And I don't think you'll ever see anything quite as big or quite as, crazy as this i mean it's probably the biggest film event of of our lifetime oh yeah i would have to agree i i think maybe i guess the only comparison that you could think of in recent memory would probably be like return of the jedi in terms of the hell you had ewoks, you had ewoks. Yeah. There were ewoks <laughs> no but i mean you had the moment of empire strikes back with the obviously finding out vader is his father and that people didn't see coming and so you want the answers which i think you can compare that to the snap like, the snap was shocking. You didn't see that coming. I mean, if you read the comics, maybe, but the the, the good guys never lose. And, like, you just or Like watched. Han Solo being frozen in carbonite at Empire, the end of Empire, sure. and you don't know where it's going. And so, yeah. like, you, you have this moment of, like, everyone's counting down. Like, we have to get answers. We have to get answers. And that's how it was. We only had to wait a year, which it felt a lot longer. But well, like uh, two years. No, I think it was just one year. Endgame came out last year. It felt year. like it. felt like it. Yeah, oh, for sure, yeah. And, uh... So, yeah, I, I, I loved it. Um, okay, we talked good things about it. Uh, my, my, I have a lot of issues with the timeline. I have so many questions. I feel like I need some sort of, like, science guide to what actually happened or what we're ignoring in terms of logic. Uh, my biggest issue is with Peter Parker in high school. Yeah. So he comes back, and then he sees his friend. The, I forget his name, the, the little bigger kid. Uh, yeah, he must have been dusted too. I guess like, so. He's it, back in school, and so is all of his classmates. Did they all just get dusted, or did they just not go to school for five years? And so now you're gonna have. Well, it's like, hard to say I, because you didn't see any other classmate that you recognize except for that guy. So the chances are that it was Peter Parker and his bigger, chubbier friend, <laughs> and they got dusted. And everybody else could, might have been their underclassmen or something. So I mean. Yeah, I've I've gone back and I've I've watched the trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home and the whole movie is about him and his friend going to Europe to visit 
their friends. So I guess possibly their friends have graduated and he's going because the second one takes place right after. But I just was like really wondering like how that happens. I also have questions about Captain America and Ugh. his whole thing. Because if that goes back and changes time, if him, would that change everything? Also, when he fights himself, he talks about Bucky. He's like, Bucky's alive. So then that means that Captain America knew the entire time that Bucky was alive, even though he didn't know. And, well, huh? The Russo brothers came out two days ago. They, they were at some convention, and they came out and said that the Captain America at the end of this movie had to have come from a, another timeline. So Captain America essentially started a new timeline when he went back and lived with uh, Peggy, I think her name is. Yeah, Peggy. Peggy Carter. Yeah. So there is a, an alternate timeline that now exists, and probably Doctor Strange had to zap him back into our timeline that we're seeing now so that he could revisit. So what I think you're doing, what you're seeing is an intentional splitting of the universe by Marvel because they have their What If series that's coming out where it's going to explore What If. It was Peggy that was Captain America, not Captain America. And there, every episode is a new what-if episode. Hmm. Then you have the Spider-Verse movie, which we saw together, which essentially is saying there's multiverse going on. You so mean I the best movie ever? Perfect, uh, it was way better than Endgame. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But I think what's happening is they're intentionally splitting the universe and they're kind of being a little vague. I would have liked to see Captain America disappear and you don't know what happens because then you're not writing yourself into like a hole. No. I think the Russo brothers or whoever was in, or Kevin Feige, kind of messed things up by bringing Captain America back so fast. I would rather not know what happened. That way you have time to think about it and kind of plan it out. But maybe they have it all planned out, and I don't know. But it made no sense. I hated the last 10 minutes. I don't like Captain America. I never like Captain America. I don't care if he gets to dance with his girlfriend. I don't... I never cared about him. And this movie was awful because it's just like giving too many moments to people I hate and I don't want to see anything about I uh, hate is, Hawkeye. I don't, yeah, I, I don't like Hawkeye. <laughs> Why don't you like Hawkeye? He's awful. It's not just Jeremy Renner and, and, and the fact that he was in one of the Hulk movies as a bad guy anyway, but it, it's a stupid character. He uses a bow and arrow against like mutants, not mutants, but monsters, people with powers. Okay, and then he gets mad and becomes like a samurai at some point. Like, why? Like, who cares? You're not going to make this guy cool. If this was Game of Thrones, they could make me like Hawkeye. But no amount of writing can make me like Black Widow. No amount of writing can make me like Scarlet Witch or Hawkeye or all these awful characters. Falcon. Ugh. I don't care. I, I, please, just get rid of them. Kill them off. Don't well, he's the new off. Captain America. Sorry, buddy. But is he? Because, uh, you and know, there's still... Bucky didn't... Didn't Bucky take over the, the Captain from America? From what I've mantle? read in the... Com com they both become Captain America. Like, But there is a story where Sam Barnes, I think that's his name or whatever... No, that's Bucky. Yeah. I don't know. Barnes, that Falcon so, becomes Captain Barnes America. And, and then in another book, uh, so the Winter Soldier becomes Captain America. I don't know. But uh, What is Falcon going to do? Does he even have powers? Like, can he wield that shield? I feel like Falcon is kind of better at that. And what, Captain America can use Thor's hammer now? Because he's like... I know. Guy? I was talking about that condition? with friends of the office. I'm like, huh? Like, I guess in Age of Ultron, he kind of moves it. But I guess just under the It's a fan service. Yeah, it was weird. I think it was a fan service. Yeah. Um, All right, so so we'll we'll move on. So MVP, the MVP of Endgame. Who do you think won that movie? Who who was the best part about it? Ah, uh, I'm gonna say, ooh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Tony Stark because I think he went out on a classy note. I didn't care when any of the other characters died, and I'm not even sure. You know, what are the qualifications to get this soul stone? Like, you just have to lose, like, your dog or something, and you can get a soul stone. So I, I didn't care about Scarlet Witch, die, or not Scarlet Witch, uh, Black Widow. But Tony Stark, man, this was our dude from the mm -hmm. very beginning. He kicked it off, and now he's gone. And I and I loved everything about it. He had the coolest send-off in history. Like, he died the greatest hero that ever existed on film, like, wow. to say things, you know. And I, I, really, I liked everything about it. He got, you know, he had his five years with his kid, and then he just, like sacrifice it all to save the world like that i mean that's the hero captain america what did he do what did he do he, just, he went and danced with his girlfriend and like put a few stones but he promised he promised her anyway all right well my mvp is captain i'm just kidding uh no. I'm, gonna, I'm thor thor won the movie for me it's Oh, okay. You needed him because that movie from the opening scene with your favorite character ever, Hawkeye, with his family, like when he loses his family and he's standing there alone in the field, it's it's heart wrenching. Like it's it just like basically just shoves you down, in my opinion. See, this is the tie we, we promised. 
But from that moment, that movie is heavy. And then when you see The Flash five years later, you're like, oh my god, like this isn't this is going a different direction I never expected. And you needed comic relief. Like that's what Thor is. Thor is just when Thor yeah. works best at being funny because you're talking about an Asgardian god. If you're a god, you should probably be able to just defeat everyone there. And so you're not really adding anything because you're just kind of unlevel playing field. But when you make them super funny and super interesting, and then you make them super relatable and with his, you know, dealing with depression and gaining weight and his love of beer like you're like oh, okay thor's a regular guy it, it was just fun and unexpected and he had some of the best moments of the film and uh chris hemsworth i i i love chris hemsworth he can really do it all i'm super impressed with what he's done with his career and where he's taken thor because i think a lot of other actors would have made him utterly unremarkable and oh, yeah. thor has just always been a highlight of everything he's done Except for Dark I think, World, I think, I think they, I think they made a, a lot of really great cho- choices with Thor because I think they knew a lot of girls are going to these films to see like the buffed up dudes. Like you got Captain America, you know, oh who's the who's the sexiest dude, or you know, guys are looking like, oh, I wish I looked like that, or I wish I could be with him. And it's just like Thor is like in a fat suit the whole movie. I I love that choice so much. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, you know. One thing I didn't like is that it's trying to make us watch Thor 2 into the Dark World or whatever you just I said. know. Uh, which I didn't like, and I don't like that they're trying to push this awful movie back on me. Like, yeah, I remember I'm the same that, way. Natalie Portman? Like, no, I don't want to remember that. It was awful. Yeah. It's, but, they brushed you know, through I like it. Thor, and I like this Guardi- Ask Guardians of the Galaxy yeah, or whatever's smart. going on. Like, I, I'm really excited for that. Yeah, I think That's it's going to be I great. Want. And you put James Gunn behind him, it's going to be wonderful. We're right, turning so, after his uh, suicide Suicide Squad reboot. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, p- playing, putting his finger in t- both pies. Uh, so where do you think it goes from here? Like, what's next? Are you interested where it goes? Are you excited? Do you feel kind of a little bit of a hangover? Like, what? What? where do we go? The best way I can use to describe this is like when you're running out of shampoo and you're too lazy to go to the store and so you just start putting water in the shampoo bottle and you're just trying to squeeze out every last bit of like soap that's in there. And I think that's what Marvel's about to do. I think they're making a Hawkeye Jr. show with this girl. I don't care. Like nobody cares. They're making, what is it, Wanda and Vision? Wanda Vision? Yeah. With the Vision. Somehow he's he's dead, right? He's got to come back. You got the Scarlet. You got Loki. Show. I'm, I'm excited movie. about the Loki show. I love Tom That's Middleton. the only one. Yeah. The Loki show. But Black Widow movie, she's dead, so is it a prequel? or is she I'm excited. Dead? I've always thought she should get a movie. It's going to be good. She's got a good story. Her origin I don't care about the Girl Avengers or whatever this is that they're trying to push on me. I don't care. Watch I it. Don't care. Watch it. We don't need don't two care. white guys telling about how we don't care about women. <laughs> I care about women, but I don't care about Girl Avengers. I think you're doing a disservice to women by like forcing this kind of image down their throat. I think you should, you know... I don't know. I, I don't want to touch that subject, but I, I don't <laughs> like it. I felt felt not organic in any way. Uh, but I don't, I'm really excited about Black Panther. I, I, I hope yeah. that's that's my dude. That's where I'm. That's what I'm hoping for. And I'm wondering who the bad guy's going to be. Like, essentially, Captain America's old. But as we found out in the beginning of that movie, like they can make you young again. They did that to Ant Man. They turned him into a baby. So yeah. is there like this new time machine where? people can be young forever do they accidentally discover a fountain of youth is galactus going to come in as a giant head and mess things up like i've heard a lot of things on fantastic four i think they're going to try to figure out some way to where they can make the fantastic four work and uh which means galactus or doom yeah and you also they got marvel i mean they've got x-men and so i feel like dark phoenix is going to be this sort of closing the book on that and then that's the fox that's the fox yeah the fox universe and, and I, but no but i think but they've acquired it now so disney can use x-men so i think that's dark phoenix is like because disney owns 20th century fox now so i think they're going to close the book on dark phoenix and then they might start it up something different so then you could have deadpool uh-huh. and four in a movie together which might be the funniest thing ever you never know but how do you how do you just all of a sudden introduce a world of mutants into a world that didn't have them during the Thanos thing? Unless it has to do with alternate timelines. So you know, I think this time thing is going to be a huge thing. Yeah, but I know. I'm really excited. X Men could be can be really good in the right hands. Yeah, uh, it, it was. It used to be good. Logan was great. Yeah. Yeah. So. 
All right. Well, um, yeah. Do we do we want to give grades? Are we, do we think we're important enough to give uh, Movie Mind grades to these movies? Uh, I know I am. Okay. All right. Well, what are you going to give? Your, what do you give Avengers okay. Endgame? All right. So we're talking A is the best, F is the worst. I'm going to say Avengers Endgame. Ooh. You know, I, I want to try to step out of all this hype and try to step out of the moment. I'm going to say it's a strong A minus. Nice. That's good. I, I, I gave my review in my Netflix earlier. I gave it a 94 out of 100. So that's an A. That's pretty good. That's yeah, that, that's, that's yeah. borderline. And, and the reason why is in terms of reality meets expectations. And that's that's how I review all my movies in terms of, like, what are you expecting when you're sitting in on it? Like, if you're going to the latest Christopher Nolan film, you're going to be looking for different things than going into, the, like, the new Seth Rogen film. You know? So it's just like a 94 in a... Avengers movie is going to be different from a 94 in like, you know, the next Spielberg But does it have movie. longevity? Is it, is it just capitalizing off of the fact that you've been with it for so long? What are people in 20 years going to say about this movie? I don't think they're going to be into it, honestly. I think oh, they, may not, they may hate it. I, I, don't, I don't agree. I think this is going to be something that we show our kids and we'll sit them in front and that's just exactly. going to be a fun ride. Exactly. It's going to be the movie that your kids were forced to watch. No. Dad, but it's, that's like, how I oh, feel about Star Wars, though. Dad, I hate King Kong. Please, <laughs> stop. I don't care if he fights Godzilla. I don't care. Yes. So that's where we are. That's where we are. So, yeah, this was the first uh, Movie Minds. I had fun. Ty, how'd you feel? I, I really enjoyed it. I, okay. you know, we should make this like a, at least a bi-weekly or a weekly yeah, thing. Yeah, for something. sure. We'll get it. And, and we're, we're all going to figure out a way to raise up the technology a little bit. We're, we'll get some audio recording. You'll be able to download this, listen to it on iTunes, Spotify, all that. We'll get there. Uh, if you've listened to this entire thing, thank you so much. That's some dedication. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, all, we have great family and friends. <laughs> but anyway, maybe, maybe someone stumbled up on this. But uh, yeah, well, this is going to be something we keep going. Yeah. Well, thank so you. It's a memory or making memories here. <laughs> yes, making movie, making memories with movie minds. All the M's we can handle. Oh, wow. All right. Well, uh, until next time, uh, I've been Nathan. That has been Ty. And thank you so much. I'll see you later.